So, uh, most of you are not aware about this, but this is a pretty exciting week um, because today is the deadline for new package develop uh, package submissions to by conductor. Um, um, and so this happens once, twice per year. Um, and I thought it would be uh, nice to talk about some of the new upcoming developments that are um, going to happen on, on Biconductor, uh, at least from things that I've, I've been working on. Um, but then also, um, there was a bit of, uh, quite a bit of Twitter activity this week because there's a new upcoming major release of our studio. Um, uh, and so the preview version of it is available. So the link here to the Google Doc has, basically it's, it's just a, a set of four links right now. Although uh, we'll get to navigate to, the, to them more. Um, um, sorry, let me close some other windows. Um, all right. So one of the tweets, um, is from um, um, Alison Presmain's Hill. Um, and so um, inside of it, uh, inside of that tweet includes another tweet from Mars to itself that links to a blog post. So, I mean, I'm, I'm giving you the full path of how I got to the, to the main link, but I'll, I'll put it over here just so you have the direct, direct link to this blog post from our studio. So this is a blog post, uh, an announcement really, written by JJ Allaire, who's the co-founder of our studio. Um, and, uh, but like, really like what made me interested was this little video over here that, um, uh, that shows how someone is writing some uh, markdown, um, uh, and then it automatically gets um, updated with like the um, output of, of that uh, markdown code. Uh, and it also includes our markdown. Um, and so there's, um, you can um, you know, see the preview version or you can switch to, um, so I mean, you, can, you can see the visual version of the output um, automatically or you can just, um, go back and see the raw source code. So I thought this could be of interest to people in the group because um, uh, like, uh, I mean, some of us have been, you know, are, have, have been using this type of syntax and code for a long time. So we can kind of see it in our minds when we're writing it. Um, but like, um, I still find it myself quite useful to see the, the, the final version of how everything looks. Um, because that way I can notice maybe some typos that I made more easily. Because th at that point, I'm focusing more on the text than the code syntax. Um, so I thought it would be cool to start trying this out um, and see, you know, if we like it or not. I've seen most people have said, like, this is a, it looks good. Um, as some people have found, like, some errors. And, and for a couple of people, they don't, they don't like it. They don't like it. So that's um, uh, that's a component of this new major release from our studio 1.4, and that will be coming to us soon. Um, but it has other things to it, um, and so um, it has new Python capabilities. Um, so I know that some of some of you here in the group are interested in Python. Um, and, uh, and like you want to use it more. Um, so you might be interested in learning about those new Python capabilities. Um, um, there's this, this new thing about adding source columns. Um, so um, right now, like in the current version of our studio, you can only have a single source panel, right? Where we're seeing only one file at a time. Um, in the new version, you can have multiple like source columns. So you can be looking at multiple files at a time. And so this could be, this could be useful. Like let's say if you're working with like um, one, one script that has, let's say the, the function code and another one that has, let's say the testing code. Um, 
or other scenarios, right? Where you maybe you want to be looking at more source files at a time. It's going to take space on your screen, right? So at this point, having a bigger monitor or something is going to probably be uh, important or useful. Um, but that, you know, this is an extra flexibility that was not present before. Um, so I think that could be useful. Um, and so let's start trying it out. So uh, this is the first time that, uh, that um, I think we've gone on any of the videos on how to install a preview version of Heart Studio. And so at the very top of the, of the, of the blog post, there's a link to it, which I'm gonna put also on the Google Doc. Um, um, and so the URL is very similar to the one that you would use for downloading RStudio in general. So it's rstudio.com forward slash products forward slash rstudio then uh, forward slash download. But at the very end, it has a very specific important piece, which is a forward slash preview. And so let me open that myself. Um, um, and so it looks like almost like the, you know, like the other version, uh, the, the regular download version. Um, but like, um, they try to warn you here that this is like a preview version. Um, and, uh, it might not always, you know, fully work. So this particular, um, version is from a couple of days ago, September 24th. And so, um, you have to find the correct installer for you. So I'm actually on the Windows machine right now. So that's this link over here near the bottom of the installer section. Um, but then it depends on what computer system you have. After that, like uh, you just download like an exit file uh, if you're on Windows or um, um, you know the installer for your computer uh, and then you just install as normal. What this does though, is that it, um, it um, uh, by default is gonna override the, the your current installation of our studio that you have. And it's gonna save your, your settings um, or should save your settings. Um, so um, if you could do that, that would be great. Um, so you can try out the features. So I already, I already installed our studio uh, 1.4 on my computer and so on their help um, about our studio here, the version number I have is already 1.4.869. Um, um, so that's the current version I have. And because we're gonna be work like this is a, a, a preview version, right? So sometimes you might run into a little bug or something. And so it becomes more important you actually want to be using the preview version to, to frequently um, install the latest version of, of uh, our CD preview uh, because they might be fixing some small bugs here and there. At this point, because they made a major announcement, it should be mostly, you know, fairly tested. Um, but, you know, you never know. Um, so let's try out that new uh, visual uh, markdown. So I'm going to make a new file. Uh, an art markdown file. Um, um, cool. So I provided some information. And so, so far, um, um, you know, this document looks like any regular art markdown document. So let me see if I can toggle. I'm going to save the file. Um, file save. Wait, I'll oh, save as. Um, I'm going to save it in my, in my desktop. Um, I made a mistake on the file extension. Uh, Cool. Sorry about that. That's a little typo there. Okay. So my understanding here is over here on the top right of the window, 
we now see a little like um, like a compass. Um, I don't know if you ever use those things for your math homeworks <laughs> and stuff like that uh, for um, triangles. And so if I uh, mouse over it, it says switch to visual markdown editor. So I'll click that. And so this is running stuff behind the scenes. And let's see. Um, and so the idea of this, I guess, is familiar to word processor style interface. Uh, you can always switch. Um, 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 and so I might want to see that message again. Uh, so let's use the visual mode, right? Um, um, so we can see now that there's, I mean, there's still a little bit here of code, right? Because it's uh, the the visual version of our studio is telling me like, oh, like um, you have a bit of code over here, then you have a little bit of code for R there. Uh, but now you can see the head end for R markdown is um, on bold. Uh, font and a bigger um oops i wanted to zoom in um, um let me close the console um, um like it's i mean i can even click here the the preview button for the plot uh sorry for the text output or for the plot etc um, um you know, so like, let's say I want to keep writing something here. So let's say like, uh, Leo will talk about uh, by conductor also, right? So I don't know if you noticed, but like immediately uh, after I typed the syntax of the two asterisks of words in bold, then two more asterisks, immediately after I typed that, uh, last fourth asterisk, it immediately uh, uh, changes how the text looks into a bold format, right? And so here, I don't need to actually like focus on um, on um, on like the 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 code for formatting the text. I can just focus on the text, and so it might be easier for me to to find. Um, 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 find a typo I made, right? Because like here, because um, I'm just looking at text, it's easier for me to see the highlighted red section and just say like, oh yeah, I do have a, a typo I made in my um, in my text, or like oh I just want that in the capital. Um, and I can see now here that we have a little bit of, of a menu for saying like, oh you want to have text in bold, italic, you want to have some code, for example. Um, uh, um, like you want to have a bullet list, uh, you want to insert a link, a picture. Um, so <clears throat> uh, if you want to have your, your, your text be like normal text or you want to have it as a, as a heading, right? So as a, as a uh, title of the section type of thing. So, uh, like, um, let's see if I can make uh, some R code to run in a moment. Um, cars. Mm -hmm. So, that is still only showing me the code. Maybe there's a little bit of an option um, to actually have this run live for me and show me the um the output of it so like before this what you had to do was to click the neat button um to like run all your code and then visually inspect like the headings and all the text and stuff like that um, um and so now you can um now you can check the formatting a lot faster uh, than before. Um, um, cool. Um, I'm going to pause the recording. Cool. Um, just for the video, there was a question about like, uh, 
can you just copy uh, from the visual version of the R markdown? Can you copy the code elsewhere? And like we found out that you can't, right? If I copy and paste um, somewhere else, it just copies the render version, but you can quickly switch. You can quickly quickly toggle between the visual editor and the and the um, uh, code version of it, and that way you can copy any code you have to somewhere else. All right. Um, so that's one of the features of R Studio version one point four. Another one here that I thought was interesting is this command palette, um, and that's because like R Studio can do so many different things, right? And so um, this Control Shift P shortcut, Control Shift P, it now shows us a little window over here that um, has um, some powerful things that we might want to do, uh, like like um, just by typing or, or selecting this menu, right? So we might want to like create a new text file, for example, right? And so Control Shift P. We'll be like, okay, that's a quick way to find that. Or like, oh, now we want to have a new Python script, for example, right? And that ju just created a file that is has a Python syntax highlighting, which I'm trying to circle around with my mouse, right? Um, um, so I mean, I actually, uh, is it exit? Is that a? Uh, um, I don't know Python syntax. Sorry. <laughs> um, that was not maybe not the best example, but let's try. Um, uh, you know, create a new R presentation file, right? And so that like already says test. Let's say I'm gonna call it test presentation, right? And so that automatically created the an example presentation file that I can use, right? Um, 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 all right, so that could be you know useful that command shift p. Uh, something that I'm not sure so sure about is this new feature about rainbow parentheses, which I'm opening a new tab. And so, rainbow parentheses is this idea of um, you have a ton of nested parentheses that is going to show matching colors for the parentheses. But my problem is that sometimes the colors <laughs> look really similar. Um, but I guess I mean this is a this is a crazy example with like I don't know like twenty nested parentheses or something. Um, but this could be you know a nice feature to enable um, um, right um, um, in some situations uh, because it might make it easier to like. Um, Visually find like uh, are the are my parentheses matching or not or like what is a parenthesis what is the opening parenthesis parenthesis for example that corresponds to this green one and so that will be this other green one over here right uh, so I don't know could be quite power uh, a quite like powerful feature uh, uh, but like uh, hopefully it doesn't it doesn't incentivize you to have you know twenty nested parentheses. <laughs> <laughs> because then that would be like crazy looking code, I think. <laughs> um, cool. So, um, so that's I think most of our uh, R Studio preview that I wanted to mention. And so there was a companion uh, tweet that I saw from Garrick, um, um, Garrick Aiden. Uh, oh, I don't know how to pronounce. Bouye, uh, uh, Bouye. Um, um, and so for those of you that don't know, Garrick is, uh, uh, creates a lot of R packages, uh, but also is a JavaScript expert. And so he, um, included a link here to, um, uh, um, to, um, uh, a little website he made called RS themes. Uh, and so RS themes, sorry, what is this? Uh, uh RS themes stands for R Studio themes. And so this is a R package he made um, that um, uh, provides, here, let me make this bigger, um, um, that provides a lot of R Studio themes that you might be interested in. 
And so uh, there's the light, the dark teams. Uh, so here I'm just showing the light ones. Um, let's look at the dark ones, for example. Um, and there's also base 16 themes. So you might find a theme that you're interested in using. And so uh, earlier today, when I was looking at this, uh, which one was the one I liked? Uh, um, yeah, Pico, this one. I was like, hmm, that could be fun, uh, this, this theme over here. Um, um, I like the dark teams with like bright colors, sort of thing. Uh, although maybe maybe this pink here is too much, uh, maybe. But um, um, so this our package has two features, uh, really. I mean, two main things. It provides a lot of themes, but then it also has functions for switching around with the themes. So let let me let me um, show this code, for example. Um, um, so you can, you can set a light theme, a dark theme, and a favorite one, for example. So, oh, actually I need to install the package. Sorry about that. Um, let me install the package. Um, in our studio. Um, Mm. All right. Looks like he's almost done installing. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's um, actually install all the themes into my computer. Um, so I installed 88 themes for me. Um, and so let's try using it. With some other code he has here, um, which he suggests, for example, adding to your R profile. And so um, this code here specifies like my light team, my dark team, and some of my favorite ones, right? And so once you have those themes uh, selected, you can switch between them using uh, use theme favorite, for example. Um, that function here um, uh, from um, RS themes uh, is like a function for toggling between the themes, right? So that changed to my light theme. Um, um, and then it can switch to my dark one, right? And so this can be quite useful if like, um, uh, you want to quickly change themes, right? And like sometimes, like um, uh, for some things, maybe you're presenting, right? Maybe the white theme might be easier for people to follow, um, or the dark one might be easier. Um, and so, this is a pretty nice little package, I thought. Uh, so I'm thinking of like playing around more with it, and I thought I would recommend it to people. Um, 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 and then if you don't like it, uh, uh, the package has a function for removing all the themes if you don't if you didn't like it. So I thought this would, this is quite a, a nice little um, new R package that you might be interested in. Uh, um, um, huh. um, um, so I would recommend trying that out. Um, so um, that's I think it for the R Studio developments. Um, and so um, I mentioned earlier today that the bioconductor submission deadline is today for new R packages. And so these are not bioconductor packages yet, but they're uh, actually one of them. Um, um, I just submitted like, uh, um, what was it? Uh, 54 minutes ago. Um, um, and so there are like fairly complete packages that are now going to go through a review process at Biconductor before they're um, shared with the world. Um, and so um, these two packages are packages that I've uh, uh, been heavily involved in making. 
And so um, I thought you might want to know about them, right? Because, I mean, <laughs> um, uh, the rest of the world will know about them soon too, right? And you might be interested in using them. So one of them is called Recon Tree, and the other one is called Megadev. Um, uh, and so you, uh, they have, both of them have here like fully, uh, fully complete documentation websites. Um, and so they're not on Biconductor yet, but they will be like in the coming uh, uh, weeks. And so um, if we look at the Bioconductor one, um, like this is a packaged on website, which uh, shows the documentation for a specific, a specific um, R package. And so uh, all of them are gonna have this reference tab at the top that allows you to see like health files for all the functions. But then under articles, there's a quick start guide. Um, and so um, this recount package here, recount tree, um, is gonna enable you to access around a little bit over 750,000 uh, human and mouse RNA seq samples. Um, so there was actually a question on, on the Slack from Kerry yesterday about like, oh, how, how can I access data? Do I need to reprocess it and all? Um, and so this package over here, Recon Tree, um, is uh, and it's part of the uh, Recon project that I've been involved in, which uh, the idea is to uniformly process RNA-seq data um, and uh, make it easy to reuse. Um, and so I thought like, you, might, you know, some of you might be interested in learning more about this package, for example. Um, and it, uh, it's a way of accessing like publicly available data and you can access like um, gene data, exon data, et cetera, exon exon junctions. Um, and so there's this guide over here is a, um, you know, fairly complete, right? It shows you how to, um, there's a section on what is available data that this recount tree package has. Um, oh, actually that didn't work, that link there. Um, um, then as, um, like some of the terms used throughout the rest of the documentation. And let's say you're actually interested in using it, you can then find a particular study. Um, uh, then recount tree actually provides information across multiple annotations. So you might be interested in data from the gen code annotation, for example, or RefSeq, et cetera. Um, then you might actually want to download the data. So this is like where you build a rain summarized experiment object. You might want to explore specifically how this, these objects from recount tree are different from other ones that, uh, that we have provided. Um, um, you can look at accounts, exons, for example, and like other more um, uh, specific file formats that we provide here. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in this uh, in this package, and it involves people from multiple teams. It involves people from the from Ben Lagamy's team at Hopkins Computer Science, Casper Daniel Hansen at Biostatistics, um, Abby Navnalor at uh, Oregon. Uh, I think H is for Health State University. Um, uh, Jeff Leak at uh, Hopkins Biostatistics, um, and then the data is hosted at Hopkins. So this is like over 150 terabytes of data, something like that. Um, it's like a ton of data that is provided on this Recon Tree project, um, and the data is hosted by SOI server. Um, so there's a lot of things here, um, and there's no uh, paper yet for this. Uh, publicly, but uh, you can expect a preprint coming soon about recount tree. Um, and so um, this is uh, Eric Nelson uh, also has started to play around with recount tree a bit. So this is maybe um, of use to people, of, of interest to people here in, in, uh, in, in the session. The other package is um, maybe it's a new name, I think, for all of you. Um, it's called Megadev. So Megadev is an interesting, uh, this is not the typical R package that I make. Um, um, and so this is something that David Zhang uh, from um, Mina Ritten's uh, lab and um, 
University College London, and I have been working together um, the R package, though, because this is a command line tool interface for something called Megadev, which is software that Christopher Wilkes created. Um, and this software is for big work, uh, big work, big week and BAM files. And so this is a lot more like low, um, like uh, lower data processing than maybe what we do with R in general. Uh, and the main thing is the main feature of, of Megadev is really summarized by this image that David Sang made where uh, the y-axis here is time for processing a thousand regions and um, we have two panels one for local files one for remote files and then we can see that Megadev is a lot faster than like our track layer and, and pi big week um, um, in like in several of the settings um, and so uh, if you want to process a ton of data right um, um, mega depth will, you know, um, will be faster really than these other tools. And real mega depth was developed by Christopher Wilkes in order to process those, you know, hundreds of terabytes of data. I mean, uh, um, hundred or so terabytes of data from the recon tree, uh, project. So it's been you know, widely used internally by us. Uh, but, uh, uh, the idea here is that we can, we want to expand the use of it um, for other people. And so to make Megadev easier to use by like our programmers and bioconductor programmers, for example, we're making this R package that is like a, that R interface for it. And so, um, um, I don't know why the vignette is not showing up. Uh, oh, I need to fix that. All right, uh, but there is, oh, uh, is that the vignette? Yeah, sorry. This is the vignette. Get started. Sorry. Um, um, so there's a lot of things that you can do, um, and the way you could you run it is like there's two interfaces. There's a, a R function here called mega depth underscore shell, and this R function is like more uh, has a syntax that is more familiar for R users. So you can say like help equals true, for example. Um, or there's another interface like megadev underscore command uh, CMD, where you actually have to type the command as you were typing it on um, on a, on a terminal window. Um, and so megadev has a ton of options here. Um, I won't go through all of them, but to make it easier for people to use it, we actually we're actually writing some wrapper functions in R that will like run megadev um, and like do something with the output, for example. Uh, so this this function over here, bam to wig, is just creating a big wig out of a bam file, um, and this is faster than tools that we've used in the past, like RSEQC, for example. Um, um, and another one is like, let's say you have a set of big wigs and a set of genomic regions that you're interested in quantifying. Um, so the function here, get coverage, will do that. Where you give it a big wig, you say like, what is the operation you want to do? Let's say you want to the mean coverage or the total coverage across those regions uh, for that given annotation file. And so this will do it and give you a, a bioconductor object, uh, a G-ranges object that you can then use later on. Um, um, so, uh, and like you get like basically the same output that you can get with other tools like the refiner or track layer or things like that. Um, um, but it's just faster. At it right so that's that's the main thing um and so this is actually like we it's not fully completed yet like i need to add like a section here about um I have two junctions yes. um um and uh, mega depth itself the 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 command tool by uh christopher wilkes uh has a lot of options that um, um that you might want to use um and um, that we don't have like uh, our wrapper functions for everything, every possibility that this uh, tool uh, provides. But like you can you can run it thanks to the to, thanks to the mega def, um, um Sorry, where is it? Um, 
I, lo I got lost in my own minion. Um, thanks to the command interface right here, like the megadev underscore cmd or megadev underscore shell. Um, um, and so this might be of interest to some of you, right? Uh, especially if you're interested in, in like working with like um, regions of the genome that have not been annotated or that, that are not part of a specific annotation. Um, let's say you have a, you want to um, check if a particular region of the genome is expressed in some samples. Um, and so you can combine this with the data from recon tree, right? Um, and then check like, is this region of the genome expressed, let's say on the GTEx um, samples, right? Um, and stuff like that. Uh, so I think this will, this is gonna, this set of tools are gonna power a lot of uh, potential analysis. Um, and I forgot to, to say that Recount Tree has uh, provide, provides access, for example, GTEx, GTEx version eight. GTEx is the genotype tissue expression project. Um, and version eight is hosted normally on, um, on, um, on the Google Cloud and you have to actually pay to download it type of thing. But true here, you can download it for free. Um, um, so that's one of the features there. Um, um, and so, um, like, I think this will be interesting to, to keep, you know, mega depth, I think is gonna be the building block, building, a building block for a lot of uh, potential future software that we'll do. And so one of those softwares is, uh, is, uh, actually being created by David Zhang, um, 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 he's actually actively working on this as we're talking. Um, and so, uh, uh, like, uh, the software that, um, that, uh, David Zhang is creating is going to work with patient RNA seq data and control RNA seq data. And it's also going to use, uh, it provides, um, it actually uses the recount data, the public data. And so, the idea of this software, for example, is to identify uh, abnormal patterns of RNA uh, splicing um, in some patient samples. And, um, and you use, in order to identify what are the abnormal patterns of, of, of uh, splicing, you can use a, a database of control data that you have locally, or if you don't have the control data, you can use publicly available data from recounts. Um, and so this software is, uh, was designed by David Zhang and Mina Ritten because uh, Mina Ritten is a clinician and she sees patients. Um, and so they're interested in like trying to find what is the specific cause of, of, uh, of a disease or disorder for a specific patient, right? On personalized, personalized genomics. Um, so all these tools I think could be useful and like, uh, for us, for example, like um, like even 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 if even without going into the um, personalized genomics area, you might just be interested in making plots like this that illustrate the different splicing patterns. Um, and so here, like different types of X and X injunctions uh, are highlighted in different colors. Uh, that um, um, and so, for example, here we can see that. On a control sample, these are the X and X injunctions using in dark blue, but in in this uh, patient sample, there's a new X and X injunction that is used a lot, that is not present in the controls, and the and this particular one might be the one of interest to, to check out uh, um, and to study further. Um, so, uh, um, so those are some of the new developments things like that. And so um, if you're interested in them, like you might be good to, to start checking them out uh, because um, uh, you know, like the rest of the public of the world will know about them in a couple of, of weeks, right? Um, so with that, let me stop the recording.